Australia Day honours have been bestowed upon many this year from those doing humanitarian work, also television heavyweight. Steve Liebman is one of those the country's most respected journalists and broadcasters. He was one of the original hosts, you remember, of the Today Show, who went on to present the program for almost 20 years. Today, he was awarded a Medal of the Order of Australia for his contribution to broadcasting, and I'm very happy to say he joins me now, back where he belongs, uh, behind a desk in front of a camera. Nice How's to meet feel? you. How does it feel to be back it's all, on TV? Well, it's interesting. I mean, it's been a while, but it's nice to be back, if only moments. Well, you still look comfortable. What does this honour mean to you today? Oh, look, I'm still, Laura, just still trying to get my head around it. It's all a bit bit overwhelming. It's, it's, it's an honour and I'm very grateful to have received it. You've I do always, think yeah. uh, it, it's an award for contribution to broadcasting and journalism. I think broadcasting and journalism has given me almost as much, if not more, than I've given it. But we're getting there. You've always been so humble, uh, and we can see oh. that trademark uh, <laughs> remains you. this Thank morning. You. But it is such an extraordinary privilege to tell Australian stories, isn't it? And you've done it so well. Well, thank you. It, it is. And, and I've, I've never forgotten the fact that that is indeed what it is, that you're going into either via the microphone, if it's radio, and that's where I began, uh, back in 1957, believe it or not, <laughs> or whether it's into their living rooms in the morning on television, as you would know. It's a privilege to, to be part of uh, the listener or the viewer's lives. Yeah. And I never forgot that. No, you didn't. Um, and it's a really good reminder, actually, that it is such a, a great privilege. When I watched you, I always looked at you um, and I thought, that is a guy that is so happy to be there. So happy to be at work mm. uh, and so happy to be doing what he's doing. Is that right? You know... Was there ever a day that you thought, oh, there, would, when, you. there was never, and I, uh, people say, oh, yeah, come on. But it, this is the truth. There was never a morning when the alarm went at three in the morning where I sort of thought, oh, damn it, I don't want to go to work today. Because I never thought it was work. No. Every day was different. I worked with a great team of people. And, uh, no, it, it was never considered it to be work. There were some big moments as well, 9-11 being one of those. Yeah. Apple iPhone watches. Yeah. What's going on there? I don't <laughs> know. Can I turn it off? <laughs> Someone. That's Let me right. turn it off. That's all right. There That's you go. Right. Sorry. I just wanted to remind you of this uh, moment where work and family uh, did collide, and it was September 9-11. Let's have a look. The plane hit the building. There are some 10,000 Australians who live and work in New York City. One of those 10,000 in New York City just happens to be my sister, Wendy. It's just a, a devastating feeling. Wow. What was that like? That was very emotional. Yeah. I mean, I'd been up the night before just watching television out in the back room. Mm. I saw the vision after the first plane went in. I realised that it was a big story mm. and jumped in the car, went out to, to the, the Nine Network studios, knowing all along that my sister and her husband were in New York, in Manhattan. They've lived there for... They've been there for my sister for more than 30 years. And not knowing, that was the problem. And then you go on air, the team in the control room at the Today program at that stage is trying to track my sister down, and finally I got a message in my earpiece saying, we've got her. And that was a huge, huge relief. And what did you say? Can we, can we talk to her now? No, they said, <laughs> we're putting her through now. OK, So, great. yeah, and that was the result. What's the, what are those moments? Obviously, 9-11, a big moment. But are there any moments that you still reflect on now all these years later? Uh, apart from 9-11, Port Arthur. Uh, of course. Um, I was the first broadcast journalist into Port, uh, from, from the mainland into Port Arthur. Um, and... That's an interesting experience. I was there for three days until the memorial service in Hobart, and that's work, as you would know. Yeah. But then the assignment's over, you get on the plane to go home, and you suddenly realise how fragile human life is, that there were these 30-plus people out wandering around the ruins at Port Arthur, and all of a sudden they've lost their lives. And you suddenly think... Life is very fragile. Mm. Port, Ar Port Arthur, 9-11, um, they're the sorts of things you remember. They were good, to great times too. I mean, yeah, I, had the, I had the privilege of travelling the world. 
Um, I was in Hong Kong for the handover in 1997. I was on air when we won the America's Cup in, <laughs> God, I feel old, 1983. You're not old. Um, so, you know, it was a great privilege. And, and as I said, it was never work. You got up, you went to bed at night, yeah. usually about 9, 9.30. You got up at 3.30 not knowing what had happened while you were asleep, not knowing what was going to happen while you were on air. Mm. And it was, it was great. One of Coomer's best exports, I'd say, <laughs> along with Tora Bright. Yes, sir. <laughs> not bad for a Kuma kid. Not bad for a, a Kuma, Kuma kid, kid at all. What about teen scene? When one of your first gigs, do you remember what your sign off was? No, no, you're going to all remind right, me, aren't you? I'm going to tell you? you what your sign off was for teen, oh, teen scene. I've got it right here. It was Yip Yip Yehudi, you're a little beauty. Ring any bells? None at all. I think, <laughs> I think you're making that up. I'm not, well, according to Wikipedia, that is true. So who knows? Um, but you, maybe you've blocked that one from your memory. Yeah, okay. maybe I have. Okay. Maybe I have. What do you think about the current crop? Those that have uh, come after you. You know, I, th I think you mean current crop of yeah, journalists, journalists generally. Yeah, and where the media industry is at at the moment. I think well, it's changed since. I mean, I had the great privilege of working for media bosses who had a genuine passion for the business they owned. Yeah. Now, I now I get the feeling it's more a preoccupation with ratings and revenue. There's pressure always on to rate and make money. Mm. When we launched the Today Show in 1982, Sam Chisholm was the CEO at the Nine Network, Kerry Packer was the owner, <laughs> and I remember Sam saying to us, you just get on and do your job as co-anchors of the Today program and leave all the trouble, all the, you know, the, the problems I'll take care of all of that. Yeah. yeah, and he did. Um, the, the other thing I think is unfortunate is that these days, I mean, when I started in radio, initially part-time, I worked for 2XL in Cooma, which was a privately owned radio station, mm. and I learnt my craft there. And as I got closer and closer to Sydney and radio and then into television, I never forgot what I learnt in those very early days in country radio. And I think these days, those opportunities aren't there anymore. No. Radio's become networked, television's become networked. Young kids who want to become journalists can't learn their craft out there. No. They're really thrown into the deep end here. And there's a lot of pressure on them. Yeah. I think it's still a great privilege though. Oh, it's a huge privilege. Yeah. It's a huge privilege, one I've never underestimated, <laughs> never. Well, thank you for the reminder uh, this morning. And it's such a pleasure to talk to you and have you back here. I don't think journalists ever retire, so maybe you should just come they don't. from time to time. They don't. <laughs> Let me tell you, plane flies overhead, you look up, is the landing gear down? <laughs> Siren goes down the street, is it fire, police? And you, once a journalist, always a journalist. I think so. Well, uh, that is good to hear, Steve yeah. Liebman. A pleasure to talk to you this morning. Congratulations, well deserved. Thank you very much. Pleasure to meet you. Yeah, thank you.